Hi guys, I am. Uh, let me welcome you in this event. Uh, for starters, uh, I would like to apologize. It's going to be in English, only German, because my no, German-speaking skills are no, no, really no, shitty, actually. It's always so English. It's going to be just in English. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Wojciech Czerny. I'm the marketing manager from uh, Trezor. Uh, the, the event itself is going to be a little less technical than you might expect, but actually this is going to be like a little bit 101, Bitcoin 101, Trezor 101. Uh, I'm here to present the uh, portfolio of our wallets, uh, our, uh, our vision, let's say, the future vision of Satoshi Labs. Uh, and after that, there's going to be a question and answer uh, section. So if you have any questions, save them for later, please, and we'll try to answer them. So uh, Satoshi Labs has been founded in 2013. Uh, we are based in Prague, uh, right hand border. And um, like I said, uh, in 2013, uh, our founder, or one of our founders, Mark Palatinus, uh, aka Slush, uh, actually lost like pretty big amount of bitcoins from, from the Mount Gox hack, from the, from the original Mount Gox hack, I don't know if you know that, but it was at that time, uh, it was a really huge exchange, and at that time, it wasn't really easy. It, it wasn't really easy to store your bitcoins or cryptocurrencies anywhere else. It was like before the hardware wallets actually started to exist. So the main reason why the the original Trezor was started was because of this hack. Actually, uh, I'm not really sure, but he lost around like hundreds of bitcoins at that time. So we can calculate the price at the moment, which is really massive at the moment. Uh, like I said, the Trezor itself was found. Uh, because of the hack, he, uh, Mark Palatinus, and his his colleague uh, Paul Rusna, you probably know him as Stick. Uh, they started shops in 2013, and they started to building up the treasure the hardware wallet itself. Um, as you probably know, the Bitcoin transactions uh, they are irreversible, unlike like fiat transactions, for example. So if someone loses, so if, if you lose the private key or someone steals it from you. Uh, and move the bitcoins from your address to his or her address, you probably won't be able to uh, get them back. So that's the reason why Trezor was found, actually. Uh, let's start with basics. I hope it's not going to be boring. Um, so we'll just go through it. The, how, does it how does it work? This is obviously a bit misleading picture, but Bitcoin, as you probably know, is a virtual currency, cryptocurrency. And Therefore, uh, you cannot call Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin itself is uh, stored in a peer-to-peer -peer network. And uh, what's interesting, and what should be interesting and important for you, is uh, something what's called private key, actually. Uh, which is something what's, uh, what allows you to spend the Bitcoins, send them from your addresses to any, any address yours or someone else's. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, the, if you have the private the, the hardware wallet, the private keys are stored directly, uh, specifically in the wallet. Trezor itself, this little device here, was specifically sorry, was specifically designed to uh, generate private keys, hold them, and never release them. Actually, uh, which is the which is the point uh, of interest for you, actually, I guess. Um, uh, the private key itself is, let's say, it's digital stamp. So you can prove ownership or authorize or sign or stamp payments if you like. And the important word here is the private key is going to be used more often in the presentation. I'm just going to skip that one. Uh, you can picture, you can imagine the key is like a regular key right here. And the important word is digital. It's made of ones and zeros. It's digital, which means it's it's a file. Uh, it can be easily cloned, it can be copied, it can be stolen. If you, if you store your private keys on your computer, uh, on your, uh, I don't know, mobile phone or online exchange, it can actually be hacked and stolen or copied. And the problem is that the, the keys uh, can be easily copied, uh, can be like distinguished from each other. And if someone has uh, or had the, the private keys, you basically have all your cryptocurrencies which are paired with it. Um, 
like I said, if the keys are stolen, uh, there's, a, there's a problem, actually. This is why we developed this device. Um, the, the exchanges are, I mentioned exchanges before, the Mongox itself was, let's say, one of the, one of the things, uh, one of the places where you can store Bitcoins at the moment or other cryptocurrencies. Uh, today is different, but at that time, you have to rely on the exchange, right? And there was Mongox, uh, nowadays it's, let's say, Bitstam or any other major exchange. The problem with exchange is that, first, you don't have the Bitcoins, actually. If you don't, if you don't own the private keys, you don't own the money. And that's where we come in, actually. If you have Trezor, you own the private keys, because the private keys are generated on the device. And as I said, they never leave the device, actually. So, um, if someone hacks the exchange, you've got a problem. Uh, a lot of people have the problem. If someone hacks your computer, you don't have a problem because the private keys are on the device and they are isolated from the computer or any other uh, device that you, that you might use it with uh, cooperation with Trezor. So uh, we call it, actually we call it a zero trust principle. That's the, that's the principle that Trezor operates with, uh, which basically means that uh, your computer can be hacked, your computer can have malware installed, which is um, something that you not me, you not be uh, might be aware of actually that how it works usually, and even if your computer is uh, let's say hacked or injected with some kind of software that could eventually uh, steal your private keys, these zeros and, and ones, uh, you're still safe because the private keys are isolated. Like I said, that's the uh, point. Uh, that's the main point of having a hardware wallet, not just Trezor. I'm not saying the Trezor is only solution, but it's definitely your best solution from my experience. Uh, so, uh, if I want you to remember one thing from the presentation, uh, it's this one, not your keys, not your coins. Exchanges are great for uh, buying, actually. Exchanges are great for exchanging the cryptocurrencies, but they are not that good for uh, storing or holding the cryptocurrencies. So, this is the one thing I want you to remember now. Uh, if we go forward, I would like to show you uh, uh, next examples of how you can store your bitcoins or any cryptocurrencies. Uh, let's start with a paper wallet. You probably saw it. Uh, I don't know if you've been to Prague. Uh, there's a place called Paralnipolis, which uh, has a cool uh, bitcoin, bitcoin cafe where you can buy bitcoins from the ATM and pay for your money, uh, sorry, for your coffee and for your beverages or whatever. Uh, this is what you get from the ATM. It's basically a piece of paper with printed uh, private key and public key as well. Um, it's not a bad solution actually. From from the history, we can we can learn from the history and let's say okay, that's that was actually a solution that worked, uh, but we are probably more evolved. As the Bitcoin uh, as the Bitcoin network evolves, we evolve with it. So why not? Fine, but uh, what about? I don't know, fire, what about flooding actually? You can store like huge amounts of bitcoins on it, but if your uh, house is set on fire, uh, and believe me, it happens actually. Uh, I've been working in Satoshi Labs uh, in the customer service, and it happened multiple times. Someone drove it away, someone burned it, someone eventually flushed it down the toilet, which actually happened one time for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, if that little piece of paper uh, consists of, I don't know, tens of bitcoins, let's say, uh, and you lose it, you get a problem. So that's it, pick from what? Good for testing, good for small amounts, good for uh, paying for a coffee, but not good for storing. Uh, another thing, uh, storing on a, on a software applications. So uh, many people use it nowadays as well. Uh, you still have some bitcoins in your computer, you're basically using uh, Electrum or different fancy software, uh, which is good for uh, selling them, buying, uh, sorry, sending or receiving <coughs> transactions, managing your funds maybe. It, it's really easy to work with. You just install a binary, install the application, and it works. Uh, but there's a problem, like I said. Your private keys are still stored on the, on the piece of hardware, on the piece of uh, hard disk, for example, or, or a flash drive. It's still your computer, and your computer is designed to share the information. The Trezor itself is designed to never share anything with the data. So, 
like I said, if you have malware on your computer, uh, it's, I wouldn't say easy, but it's, it could be had, actually. Uh, these are good for quantities. We, we usually talk to people and they're like, okay, I don't have any that amount of Bitcoin, so I don't want to buy it. It's too expensive for me, the device itself. And we always say, all right, uh, you can use mobile wallets, you can use computer wallets, you can use apps, but just put it only that amount of Bitcoin which would you carry in your own wallet, the amount of money you would carry in your wallet. You wouldn't carry your life savings in your wallet around, right? So that's probably the same principle. And that's uh, when the treasure come in. Uh, this is our um, flagship, I would say. This is our new device, Trezor Model T. It's a second generation. And uh, like I said, it's specifically designed to Generate private keys, hold them, and never leave them, actually. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept, uh, but uh, there's going to be question and answers after that. We are happy to demonstrate how it works. Uh, we are happy to show you how it's going to be set up, how it's going to work, or how it works, actually. But um, with Trezor, you basically become your own bank. You're walking around with a, with a bank in your, in your pocket. Uh, it's, it's basically a marketing motto. Uh, I, I don't want to kid you, but it, it's like that actually. You have your private keys, you are only owner of the private keys, and you are only owner of the bitcoins actually. Um, it's just a piece of hardware actually, so it can be uh, it can be lost, it can be uh, someone can someone can steal it from you, uh, which is not a problem as well. You can use. Uh, Physical, you can use uh, physical protection, which is pinned in that case, or uh, uh, passphrase encryption for that matter, just like uh, the added layer of security, actually. Uh, the good thing about Trezor is so when it's plugged off, when it's plugged off the computer, it's off. It's called a wallet. It can't be hacked because it's offline, let's say. And like I said, specifically designed not to <laughs> release or leave the private keys whatsoever. Um, it's basically, um, as I said, works only if it's plugged in. Uh, it's, uh, I would say it's a combination of having something really convenient and having something really secure. If you connect the device to the computer, as, as we show you uh, after that or later, uh, you will see that it can be used with uh, third-party applications, but it's mainly used with a web application that we developed. I'm going to show you later as well. Uh, it's called Trezor Wallet. It's a web application, fully open source, which we develop and maintain, and which works directly with the device itself. Um, thing is, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I'll try to explain again. Uh, if you lose the device, uh, What's it going to bring you? So what's it going to cost? If you lose the piece of paper, which is a paper wallet like I showed you before, you're basically screwed. But if you lose the device, uh, there's a thing called uh, mnemonic, or recovery seat, or recovery mnemonic, we call it, which is a combination of uh, unique words that you you're get uh, during the first initialization of the device. So if you initialize the device for the first time, you're provided with 12 or 24 words, which are unique, actually, and the important thing is if you put them in the right order, you put them in the selected order, you can derive the private keys back. So if the device is stolen or destroyed, you can get easily a new device, or you can use third-party app, because uh, we use common standards. We develop the standards, and they are used widely through, uh, through the ecosystem. And you can easily reclaim your private keys, and you can reclaim your bitcoins. Um, there's a limited communication channel, uh, USB. The first device, as you, as you can see here, the, the original device from the 2013, uh, it's called Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Trezor 1. Uh, it communicates through the micro USB. And the second one, uh, Trezor Model T, which is actually only a few, few months old, communicates through USB as well, but it communicates through the USB C protocol. Uh, it's a touch screen as well. Uh, this one, was limited to OLED screen with two, with two hardware buttons, but we'll talk about it later, we'll show you later. Uh, this is the, like I said, this is the Trezor 1, uh, the original hardware wallet, uh, which is actually 
the first hardware wallet ever designed. Let's say it's our, we like to say it's our golden standard. Uh, it's, been, it's been actually uh, discounted uh, recently, so you can purchase them relatively cheap, let's say. Uh, the thing is we want to, we want to develop a uh, approachable device, like be a price friendly device for everyone. That's the first one, that's Trezor One. Uh, Trezor One T, the, the second, uh, the, we call it flagship, <laughs> I'd like to call it the flagship. The, the, uh, the device on the right side. Uh, it's our new device. Uh, th there's a few differences. For example, it has a full touch screen, so you can put those 24 or 12 words, uh, your recovery mnemonic, you can uh, put it in directly on screen, for example, which increases the security of the device. Um, at the moment, we do support uh, over 550 uh, tokens and cryptocurrencies, actually, uh, including ERC20 tokens. Uh, and that's the thing I want to talk to you about as well. Uh, you're probably familiar uh, with Monero, which is a private coin, something uh, close to Bitcoin, something that evolved from the Bitcoin, but a uh, greater focus um, on privacy. Uh, there's been a huge hype in the, in the community around the, around the Monero. Uh, we are actually finishing the integration and it's going to be available in the devices uh, in following days, hopefully. Uh, also, uh, we'd like to, we'd like to uh, talk about our new device because it's fully written in Python, which is a programming language that allows us to uh, be more flexible, let's say. Uh, the, the older version was written in C or C++, and it's not really agile programming language. The, the, the new one, the Python version, allows us, or gives us, uh, let's say, freedom to develop new applications and new uh, output integrations. As you see, uh, the Monero is a great example of you know, community-driven uh, development and our in-house development, actually. Uh, like I said, all the private keys, including all the cryptocurrencies, stored in the device are directly on the device. Uh, so, why choose Trezor? It's convenient and intuitive to use. Uh, it's built uh, with, with a community development, let's say. We do cherish our uh, community around the Trezor. Uh, I didn't mention that all the, all the software and all the hardware is fully open source because we do believe in transparency uh, as a company and as a, as a manufacturer of the device, so that's something you would probably uh, cherish as well, I hope. Uh, like I said, uh, we also developed some uh, standards, some technical standards, which are uh, now used by all the hardware uh, and software wallets. Uh, I would say all, most of them use them. Uh, for example, like I said, uh, Recover C, uh, Passphrase Encryption, and a few other standards which are used throughout the throughout the market. 